tell you something because uh, a man of God who Deanna and I and you are aligned with is Chuck Pierce, and he gave a word, uh, and I, I have received uh, a lot of um, text about this word, and I thought, well, I need, I, and I sent it out to our regional leaders and our power grid people, but I did not send it out to you all, and you all may have heard this, but I, I want you to hear this so that you can be expecting. It's, it's why we talk about the Hebrew calendar and, and so that we can be expectant for what God is doing in the earth. It's why we read the word. This is what God is saying. This is what God is doing. So here's the word that Chuck Ferris had on October the 8th. He said, all of a sudden, I saw a word of knowledge blaze across uh, this place. You know what a word of knowledge is. It's one of those uh, gifts that, uh, not, the, not the fruit, but the, the gifts. A word of knowledge blazed across this place, and it was in the heavenly realm. That's why we have this ladder here. This is far above. Chuck obviously was in a heavenly realm, and he said written across that was the word circuit, like a circle. And he said, I saw the Lord reach down inside of us and pull a circuit. He began to take his hand and re-circuit individuals. You know how sometimes a circuit board uh, gets disconnected and it has to be fixed? Uh, his hand to re-circuit individuals, and all of a sudden he began to re-circuit this region and re-circuit our nation. The Lord said, I'm going to make my people so in line with my purposes, so thinking the way I'm thinking, this is God talking, thinking the way I'm thinking, those whom God recircuits will start walking in a new way. Say, that's me. That is then me. for this nation, really as he is recircuiting it, I saw a date come in on that circuit, and all of a sudden it popped back up, and it said November the 18th. That's tomorrow. November the 18th? I'm, uh, October the 18th, I'm sorry. That, that is tomorrow. I just want to say, this is Chuck talking, I just want to say from this place beginning October the 18th, get ready. The word circuit, I think, means a line that's gone out. For years, Chuck would teach us out of Psalm 19, wasn't it, that a, a line would go out. It would be a like a word of the Lord, and then it would just circle the earth, waiting on the time for that word to manifest. The word circuit means a line that's gone out, a message that's gone out, a current that's gone out, the word of the Lord that's gone out, and it originated, and then it came back full circle, which is what the Hebrew, how God tells time. It's not linear. It's not like here and then a straight line, it is in a, a circuit or a circle. And the Lord said, you will know beginning October the 18th in this nation that things have come full circle. So ever since that happened and I got this word transcribed for me that I have just been, I, I said, I don't know how this is going to work. I'm just going to say the word of the Lord. It has gone out like a, land, a line from a man of God. And Deanne said of Chuck last night, he's got more bandwidth than me. You know what I'm saying. He just sees and hears things that I can't even see or hear. So I'm just going to say what he said. He said that on October the 18th, that things in this nation have come for a full circle. You will know that I have pulled, now listen to me, you will know that I've pulled the plug on things you've been asking me to pull the plug on. I say that when that plug has been pulled, I'll bring it up one by one. This will make sense in a minute. minute. But the messages that have gone out in the past will not be the same messages that I allow to go out in the future. The line is going out from the heavens, and as my voice, which is what this decade is all about, it's the decade of the voice, my voice goes out on that line, I say to you, it will not return void. And what begins tonight, that was October the 8th, what begins tonight will cause the nation to be circuited again with 
my message and it will not return back void. So Dutch and Chuck were together and uh, so here's what Chuck told Dutch. He said what he felt like the Holy Spirit was saying about pulling the plug because that that was interesting. Pulling the plug and recircuiting the nation was in reference to what has been happening. This is Chuck talking. What has been happening in the nation since late 2019. Hello. And that a confrontation is coming. Just as we are now seeing resistance, such as walkouts, such as I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. I'm not wearing that. I'm not going there. All this resistance, such as walkouts and et cetera, when inappropriate things are said and done in our nation. These things will continue to be confronted and the layers of lies and, and confusion that have covered us in our nation are going to come off one by one. I'm gonna pull the plug on those things that have caused a confusion oh. and are inappropriate, inappropriate are going to come off and the plug is going to be pulled one by one. This means that the church will think differently. And the nation will begin to think differently. Get ready for this shift. And you know, we talk a, a lot about repentance. The bottom line definition of repentance is that you would think differently. It is. Now, we do repent of our sin, as Jesus said. We do all that stuff. Yeah, we but do. when we say, I, it's, I'm, I'm going to think differently. And even when you get born again, you're thinking different. Yeah. My God, but I, need, I need this. I, I, I need to be born again. Yeah. The, the Bible says you've got to be born again to even see the kingdom of God. We want to see a kingdom of God demonstration. So then Dutch says, let's pray. Father, thank you for these encouraging words. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for these encouraging words. You are recircuiting the church in this nation. We are saying yes to this. We want to be in sync with you, both in our actions and our thoughts. And we repent. We change our thinking and we'll move with you. We are moving from a forerunning stage to fulfillment, from preparation to performance. Recircuit us and our nation and pull the plug, listen to this, on evil circuitry. Pull the plug on lies. Pull the plug on deception. Pull the plug on evil strategies and plans and on everything that has been launched by people to destroy your plan for America. Then he said this, and this was riveting. We are well aware that in this coming revival, some who oppose you, who now oppose you, will fall in love with you. They will be recircuited. And I was just talking to one of our favorite Native American friends the other day. I was telling Dee this, and she said, I, I just don't know. I just don't know if I can get over this. I, I just don't know. And I said, let me just preach Deanne's message to you. Of course you can get over it. It's John chapter 20. And if you remit their sins, they're remitted. And if you retain them, they're retained. So you need to remit their sins right now. That just opens up, hello, opens up the window, opens up the dark, uh, the, the uh, door for them to come, hello, into the ark. And she said, my God, I've been saved most of my life. I've read that scripture a million times, she said, and I never thought about it like that. Well, I need to remit some sin. I mean, she just got off the phone. And I'm sure she started remitting sins 
So, so I loved it. We are well aware. Now, Dutch said this, that in this coming revival, some who oppose you and who oppose you now are going to fall in love with you. They will be recircuited. So do it, Lord. We will rejoice over their salvation. And whatever, whatever, whatever you had planned for October the 18th, which is tomorrow, do it. We're all in. We decree that each of us in our nation is being recircuited. Put your hands together and thank God. So one of our favorite scriptures over these last several months is 2 Corinthians 4. Look not at the things that are seen, but at the things that are not seen. For the things that are seen are temporal, and the things that are not seen are eternal. Hebrews chapter 6, I love this, and I, I, I just want to get what this means. It says, we are to partake of the age to come. I know, that's what's happening. We are to bring tomorrow into today. That whole thing about those battles, you battle from tomorrow. Yes. Just battle from tomorrow. Now, 2 Timothy said God gave us purpose before the world began. Oh, yes. Romans 4 says, call those things that be not as though they are. All of these scriptures speak of an unseen realm, the unseen realm. Let me be so bold to say, as Chuck said, from a heavenly place, a heavenly yep. realm. And really, we're already doing it, if, you could if we could just go a little bit natural right now. We draw from the unseen realm when we use our cell phones. We draw from the unseen oh, realm yeah. when we have these wireless mics, when you turn on the TV, when you turn on the radio. They operate with waves of frequency that are unseen. So what the Holy Spirit is saying today, you're about to come into the day of your high calling. I've got this ladder here to represent we are going higher. We have a paradigm shift. We are seeing from another perspective. God says, here's what God says, I'm going to answer your prayers from where you are going, not where you are right now. You are in tomorrow. Shout, I've got to go up. You've heard the expression, well, that's a sight to see. But that's what I'm talking about. We're going to have to go up to see what we can't see. You know, Deanne and I talk about this all the time. We see, we'll be driving along and we'll see those hawks up there on those high lines. They're, they're up so they can see <laughs> their breakfast or their lunch or their, they're, they're up there so they, can, they can't see so bad when they're uh, so much when they're on the ground, but they get up and they can see we're too low. Yeah, we're too low. We got to get a new, I, I need, here's the deal. I need to see something so I can say something. And that's how we're going to move in this decade of the mouth or this decade of the voice. It is a decade, as this lady that Deanna has been talking about, she calls it a decade of declaration, a decade of decree. You say what you see, though, from a heavenly perspective. So I was just thinking about it, and I, I don't know, it started, I've, I've, I've watched this show every year since it started, I don't know, 10 or 12 years ago, and it's called, some of you might watch it, it's called The Voice. So it just started, a, a new season just started, a, I don't know, a few weeks ago, and the premise of the show is quite uh, prophetic. It's a, it's a singing competition, and there's four uh, judges and their famous uh, singers and and so it starts with a blind audition and the judges determine if they want a person they ha they end up with these teams uh, and and so but they determine if they want a person on their team uh, uh, but they that they can't see them 
the only way that they determine what contestant is going to be on their team, they're chosen because of their voice. They're chosen because of the voice, not their appearance, not their gender, not their history, not their job title, not their education, not their age. There, there have been 13-year-olds, uh, there have been 85-year-olds on this uh, show the last several years, and they put their individual teams together based on the voice. And I believe this, that God is putting his team called the Ecclesia together with people who've got a voice, who will penetrate the darkness, penetrate the corruption, penetrate the death, and pull the plug on all of that. I'm saying that our voice will open up a realm of solutions, a realm of healing, a realm of deliverance, a realm of angelic activation. So here's where we are. God is anointing our voice for accurate communication. Hey, Sandy, can I say something now? You got to get on the I mic. I know, but can I say it now? Sure. Sometimes she says no. I am on a roll. I know you're on a roll, but here's the deal. Your voice is the voice that it. activates manifestation. You are the agent of manifestation into the material world from the spiritual unseen. You materialize the unseen into the material wor world, and you do it with your voice. Your voice activates the materialization of the unseen world. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. And in this new season of the voice, and here we are at a new beginning, use your mouth to release the manifestation of the kingdom of God. Hey, hey, hey. hey, hey, hey I hey, love hey. it. Hey. So God is anointing our voice then for accurate communication. And manifestation. And prophetic persuasion. That would be how you decree a thing. And it is established. Say this. I'm going to say what I see. I'm going to say what I see. In the unseen realm. And it's going to manifest. In this seen realm. Yes. So this ladder represents an invitation from God to ascend. It represents an understanding of the spirit realm. It represents new spiritual sight. It represents, here's what it represents. It represents a voice from a different dimension. Now, it's been done in the word of God because there were men and women that were caught up. Ezekiel, Daniel, Jesus, John, Paul, and God seems to be enlarging how we apply this gift of language, our voice, to prophesy and to speak to the culture. You can, talk, you can go back and you can read about Joseph and he had a gift and he spoke to Pharaoh. Daniel had a gift and he communicated with the king. Paul, Apostle Paul, had a gift and he was used by God to write much of the New Testament. So I've got a new modern day example of being a voice communicating from an unseen realm. It's one way that the kingdom of God is advancing, and it's as we speak. So I'm not going to give names. I'm not going to give dates. I'm not, gonna, I'm, not, I'm not even going to give countries. But there was a pastor from another country that felt like God had called her to economics. Well, she didn't know anything about economics. She was a chemistry major, 
And so she knew nothing at all about it, but she knew that God had called her to do something in this arena. So here's what she did. She laid her hands on her head and asked God for a mind shift for the language, hello, of economics, though she had never read a book on it, she had never had a class on it, and her testimony was that she started to partner with God, who's on the inside, and he put a level of economic communication in her, and to this day, she convenes a European economic summit with ambassadors and leaders and World Bank leaders and others. And so here's what she did after that happened. She asked a prophet friend of hers. They were, they were having a, a conference. A prophet friend of hers, if she would come and she would help her to prophesy over these very influential people. And this, I was listening to this and this um, prophet described one man who was a chief economist of a worldwide company. You know the story, Deanne. He was presenting a blueprint at the time, this was six or seven years ago, for a whole new way of healing and restoring uh, capitalism. And so when I was listening to this testimony a couple of years ago, I was, I was remembering back six or seven years ago when I had several conversations with a chief a economist of a worldwide company who had a plan. He said it was a plan from heaven. I prayed over him. I prophesied. And he would ask me, of all things, uh, all kind of questions, particularly about the Hebrew calendar. He loved the Hebrew calendar, and he wanted to set up what he was doing according to God's calendar. And, and so his vision was all about an economic uh, vision that had the potential to change things. But, of course, there were roadblocks all the way until, say until, yeah. until a voice for accurate communication and prophetic persuasion came into it's time. It's like the line went out, and then it came time for them to prophesy over this man. So I, time went on, and I got disconnected from this man until a couple of years. In fact, it was 2019, in the fall of 2019, and I, I heard this story that I just told you and I, I wondered if who they prayed over was, in fact, the man that I had visited with some, I don't know, six years ago. So here's what I did. I put my hand on my head. I mean, that's what that lady did. I put, because her head is a little bit of a problem. And so I put my hand on my head. And I said, you know, God, I got disconnected from this guy. And would you just help me reconnect and help my brain to figure out how I might get connected with this guy again? And through a series of events, I don't even know. I did locate him. I visited with him. Now we communicate through an encrypted app. And I'm on a prophetic prayer council. And he just loves for me to come on there and tell him about the Hebrew year. And the Hebrew, I've already told him about Heshvan, Dan. Yeah. And so two of the people on this council that I am on are the two people I talked about. The one who puts her hands on her head and gets a, a brain filled with economics and the other one who uh, prophesies and so I, I am, I feel like I'm the new kid on the block. I'm not even, I'm not even a prophet and I'm in all, I'm in over my head, Wait. which maybe that is good, good you know, over your head. And, uh, so here, here's what I did. And so I got on, now this was just last week. 
So I get on the app that we communicate on, and I put a message on that app about revival. And there were several on the council that said, Deanne, you will love this. And, and we do not hear this on the news, but several said, oh my gosh, we're beginning to see the uh, revival in, listen to this, Geneva, Paris, Berlin, France, Germany, complete with demonstrations of the kingdom of God. So, and, and so that was exciting. And so the next day after I posted this, which was last week, I guess, or something, I get a phone call from a man who's on that council. Now, he and his wife had been missionaries for 16 years in China, of all places. So they had been missionaries to China for 16 years, and what had happened to them in all of this is they met and became friends with this chief, eco uh, chief economist that, that I'm talking about, and he met him in uh, Brussels, but this man said that they're, they're not in China now, but they had moved back in last year to uh, Florida, and he explained, now, now, I'll tell you about revival in just a minute, but he said this to me. He, I mean, he just calls me up. At the, I don't even answer the phone because it's a number that I don't have. But he left a voicemail. And so I listened to the voicemail, and I said, holy moly, what, what is this? And so, of course, I'd call him. I, I'd call him back. So he explains that he, now some of you may not know this name, but he explains that he's the director of a international network for Randy Clark. Now, Randy Clark, Deanna and I met Randy Clark and all of these revivalists. There was a great revival that was going on in Argentina in the 1990s. Deanna and I met this Randy and all of these Argentinians uh, in Oklahoma City in 1998. Uh, we were told to go to that because we were at a college down there in a master's uh, program, and, and we went to this, and there, there was just a great revival going on in Argentina, in that nation, and so we went to that, and Randy focused on healing and deliverance and revival and salvation, and he, and he still does. So this man who called me said, you said, that the revival was about to happen in America and worldwide. So he said, I just want to share the vision that I have with you. And that is this, that there is revival that is going to come to various states and it's going to be so big that other states are going to go help them with that revival. And I said, you know, that just reminds me of that portion of the scripture where uh, pe they're out there and they're toiling, hello, all night, and they don't catch any fish. And Jesus said, go back out there, but throw your nets on the other uh, side. And it said that the nets were so uh, heavy with all of the fish that other boats came to help them with the catch. And he, and he, he never even hello, connected in that that's, that was the scripture to represent what he had just uh, said. So one of our regional leaders sent me this. And this was a prophetic word that happened about a month ago. So I just want to read this in light of revival. Are you still here? Okay, you're still here. For the Lord says, there's only one risen king and risen savior, and he has risen with great power and dominates every thought coming from any false religion. 
I, says the Lord, am the father of spirits, and I quicken from the inside out, and I take you to a place of great victory, and the place so high, hello, that nothing can reach you or touch you to drag you down. I'm the one who created the universe, says the king. I'm the one who created it with great explosions, I love this, of my word. I am the one that did this in the very beginning. I did this, says the Lord. Not Kali, not Buddha, not Allah. I am the one who did this, says the king. I am the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the King of glory, who is risen with great power. Who is this day, As I, and God is talking, who is this day, I, God, I can see him with my eyes, sitting at my right hand. For I see him, I talk to him, I testify of him. For there are three that testify in the earth, the spirit, the water, and the blood. And know these things, saith the Lord. The Holy Spirit is moving. The blood of Jesus speaks. And the water of the word testifies to it. So be excited. Be glad. You're about to see the greatest outpouring of power that you have ever seen, that you have ever known in the earth. And then... And then the man says this, I am raising up revival in Kansas. You are kidding me. He said all that. And he said, I'm raising up revival in Kansas. I'm doing these things as the Lord, for you're going to see revival start to shake. And it'll shake everything in the earth. And I believe it will unplug everything that needs to be unplugged. And you will see everything change, saith the Lord. For this is a time of great power, says God. So get ready. That's exactly what Chuck said. Get ready to ask, receive, and not beg again. So stand. Standing. I'm. Okay, just a second. Now this is so important. Sandy and I, the only reason why we're here today is because the first time we ministered, a lady stood in the middle of the meeting and pointed and said there's going to be a revival on the face of the earth and you're going to be at the forefront of hey. it. Now what year was that? 84. 84. Why do you think that he has to keep reminding us of revival? And I want to suggest, I submit this to you today, is that it is not going to look like a star moving around with a powerful word, although I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. It has got to look like something else or we will miss it. So, when you put your hand on your head, I thought we need to put our hand on our head and we need to say, bring it on because I, I don't know <laughs> what it's going to look like. Hey, And I don't want to miss it. Listen, a whole generation of people, a whole people group missed the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ because they thought they knew. <coughs> so, I think that revival does not look like a series of meetings in a... Uh, uh, it's, it's more than that. And it has everything to do with that... Unlocking the glory. glory. Not the glory. The glory. So say this. I will learn to live. I will learn to live. From the unseen realm. Maybe we better put our hands realm. on our head. 
I will say what I see. I will say what I see from the heavenly perspective. From the heavenly perspective. I have a voice of influence. I have a voice of influence. The voice of truth. The voice of truth comes from the house of God. Put your hands together and thank God.